And welcome to Grandad Reviews. I'm going to carry on with my theme with film cameras. And just recently, I've been noticing on most YouTube film kind of channels that uh, Yashikas have been coming up. In particular, the Yashika Electra 35s. And I just happen to have... I just happen to have... Uh, Yashika 35 GTN Yashika 35 GT and the Yashika MG1 and I thought I'd just have a quick overview of these three cameras and the differences between them all. So if we look at the Yashika 35 GT. Now there was the Yashika 35 before that, Electro 35 before that. And they have this, what some people think is a... Uh, nuclear symbol but it just means basically electronic it's got it's electronically controlled it comes with the yashinon color dx 45 mil f 1.7 quite a fast lens and they're all basically as we say based on the same thing it's a range finder it's what's called a coupled range finder for the actual focusing and the rangefinder coupled so it actually you can you've got a focusing spot you see here we've got a diamond shape so what we have is a, a diamond symbol in the middle the double spot so you whatever's in that diamond you line the two symbols up so if you're looking at a, a hand and then you've got a diamond of the same hand and you just bring them and line them up. A very simple system, and a very accurate system as well. The GT and the GTN and the GTS and the Electra 35 on its own all have a light meter CDS cell here and on the top you have the ISO selector. And all that does is, if you look at this little window, changes the size of the opening so basically it's an aperture control it's controlling the aperture to that cell so whatever you set on here will be the size of that hole it's an aperture priority camera so you set the aperture and the camera will set the shutter speed on the lens you've got auto which is your aperture priority you've got a bulb setting and then a flash setting which forces the camera to shoot at 1 1 30th, no matter what. Though you can fire a flash at any shutter speed, but the thing is you don't know what the shutter speed is because the camera doesn't tell you what the shutter speed is. And it's a stepless shutter speed. And on the GT, GTN, GTS, you're looking at a shutter speed variation of 1 500th at the fastest and 30 seconds at the slowest and the only exposure indication that you've got are these two lights here so you've got a red overexposure so what that means is at the aperture you've set with this ring here the camera can only go up to a 500th and it needs more than a 500th of a second so you then just turn the ring until the light goes out. Let's see if I can show you on that one. We've got the red light showing up that we've got too much light. And we turn the aperture ring until that goes out. Like so. So that's be with the red light on it saying I've gone as fast as I can with the shutter and I need a faster shutter speed. So if you bring this down, it's now saying okay, I can use up to my 500th of a second. And I can take the shot. No, I can't. 
it will still fire, but it will fire at five hundredths, so you'll probably you'll end up being overexposed, which is what the light's saying. The yellow light, and some people are saying this is to show that you're underexposed. It doesn't. It's not showing you that you're underexposed. It's showing that the camera is now going to take an image that's less than one thirtieth of a second. So you're probably going to get camera shake. So you need to be on a tripod. And if you want to get rid of that, obviously just open the aperture up. And now it's saying that I'm going to take a shot that's going to be faster than a thirtieth. But you don't know how fast. But it just means that you're probably going to be able to handhold it. And that's what's saying on there. This is the GTN. And the difference between the GTN and the GT is the GTN has hot shoe rather than the cold shoe. In GT, you've got the PC sync on the side, and you've still got the PC sync on the side of the GTN. Now, the designation GTN GSN just relates to the color of the top plate. So, GTN is black, GSN is silver. The cameras otherwise are basically identical. It's the same lens, same shutter speeds, same layout on the top plate, exactly the same. So looking on the top plate here, this is the GTM version, exactly the same. Got a lock to lock the shutter, advanced lever, we've got the film counter, which also, if you look on the back, there's a battery test button. You press that, that little light their lights up to say you've got battery power. Rewind lever, and I say the overexposure and the slow shutter speed indicator and your ISO dial. On the lens, you've obviously got focusing, aperture, and that auto bulb and shutter speed. And some little symbols on the aperture ring saying the, that's for brighter conditions, cloudy conditions, indoor conditions. And this is a self timer lever here. <clears throat> You've also got a depth of field scale, and so you can do your hyperfocal distance. In so if you picked f16 and put the infinity mark at f16 there, you're down to two meters or seven feet. So from there to there, it's going to be in focus. So you can just use it as like a zone focusing when doing street photography. On the back, obviously, you've got a viewfinder, and if you pull. Yeah, you've just got a normal type of film loading system inside. Now the reason you can shoot flash at any shutter speed on these is because it's got a leaf shutter inside, which allows you to do that. Now, what's the difference between these GT versions? And this MG version, the differences are quite a little a subtle, but can be important. They've moved the light meter from here to here, which means if you want to use filters, instead of having to work out what the factor is and changing the ISO to account for a two-stop ND or something like that, if you put it on here, the meter is going to work it out because it's the light's going through the filter to the meter. And setting the ISO is now on this lever here. But again, if you look carefully here, all it's doing is opening up a slot as well. That's all it does. Still got the focus in on here. And we've still got the aperture on here. But you'll also notice even though it's a Yashinon 45mm, it's now an f2.8 and not a 1.7, so it lets a little bit less light in. So I'm just going to stop the video here because I forgot to uh, say something. The shutter speed range on the MG1 is different to the GT, GTN, GSN. It ranges from 1 500th of a second to 2 seconds, not 30 seconds. Also, that lever on the top that says auto and then with a flash symbol, that works the same as the symbols and movement of the front of the 
lens on the GT, GTN and GTS and Electro 35s. Whereas the auto is your aperture priority, turn it to flash, or then fix the shutter speed to 1 30th for flash. And as you can see, there is no ball setting on the MG1. Back to the video. Also, I've noticed there's only three click stops on the aperture at these symbols. The ones in between don't click. That's another difference. Still got the diamond rangefinder patch that you can use. Still got a lock on the top. Still got the over and slow, slightly bigger writing. We've got the hot shoe. We've got the rewind lever. We don't have a battery check. So the only way you're going to check if you've got remaining batteries if these lights don't light up. So it's a slow one. Can't open it up enough. What are we on? Put it on 800. That works the same. Bit of light. And we've got over. Which works exactly the same. On the back, you've got the you find out inside we've still got the exact the same leaf shutter size wise yeah basically the same size feel the same about the same weight just the main difference is is, is the position of that light meter being there and it being a 2.8 lens instead of a 1.7 they all take fantastic images they have a great cameras as long as you're happy using aperture priority and you don't know what the shutter speed is going to be you're going to just have to take it for what it is i'd also recommend if you're using it in Bright sunlight, if it's a really sunny day, you use a slow film because one five hundredths, you soon hit that and yeah, you're struggling. That's where the advantage of the MG1 comes in because you can put a ND filter on here and the meter will take it into account. Um, I just fit a variable ND on it. If it's bright and I'm using a faster film, I was using 200 rated film the other day, it was bright sunshine. I was hitting that 500 all the time, even at f16. Put the ND on, I can change it. So that's the only, not so much the downside of these. It's a beautiful looking camera. The lens is sharp, quite contrasty. I'll show you some images I've taken. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend them. They're reasonably cheap at the moment, so if you can find one in good condition. One thing you've got to look for is what's called the POD, pad of depth. And underneath this shutter button, there's a little pad that pushes a lever down. And that pad falls apart with age. Um, one way of, it's not a guaranteed way of knowing it's, it's gone or not, is for the sound. So if I can see if I can... When you wind on, you should be able to hear a, a, a knock before it gets there. I don't know if you could hear that. And then hit the shot. Hit the click. And that one's, I had to replace the pad on that one and this one. Listen to this one. But that's not a guaranteed because this is an MG1. No thump. So the MG1. No thump. Because it doesn't have a pad. I've had a look at the uh, repair manual on this and it hasn't got a pad on it. So it's just on GTN, GSN. 
the Electra 35 and the GT. It's only on these versions that you get that click. So just listen for that. Uh, another common issue, A, you have to get a battery adapter. So you have to get an adapter like this. It basically changes this size battery, which is a 4L44 battery, and change it into a, a bigger, longer battery. Just stick that in there. And you just put that positive side in. Drop it in. Tighten it up. And just check the little light works. And it's the same on the MG1, you need that same adapter. But what the other issue is, apart from the battery, is at the top of this battery tube, I'll hold it there, and where the battery tube comes up here, there's a spring at the bottom. And that spring has got the terminal for the negative that pokes up through and there's a white wire and if you get any batteries that leak the acid from the battery can go up that wire and corrode it and it pops off so even though it sounds like the camera's working you got no you get no lights on here and you get no battery check light but you can hear the, the shutter firing it's only firing at a 500th. It's like the battery's flat, basically. And you have to try and reattach that wire inside there. But if the light's working and it goes thump, you're pretty safe. So that's my quick look at the Shika Electra 35s. GT, GTN, and the MG1. And I think they're great value. We'll have a look at some images. enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up that helps the channel want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button till next time see you later